Welcome Ultimate DIYers. Today we're going to do another episode on the handyman business and we're going to this one's going to be titled What's in a name? So I've written a few things down here, did a little bit of research for you, and I'm going to give you my two cents on how to pick a really good name and what you really need. First, let's look at the definition. I went and wrote this down. This is from the Oxford Dictionary, and they said a person able to be able to or able to be employed to do occasional domestic repairs and minor renovations which I like the renovations part. That's great to actually put on a title. I don't particularly like just domestic because I do domestic and commercial. Um, and I believe there's a lot of money in the commercial side. So I think you drastically limit your income potential if you stick to nothing but residential, even though I will say probably 80 to 85% of what I do is residential, but don't cut yourself out of that extra income. So I would add uh, commercial as well, but that is their definition. Now, it also sounds an awful lot like a DIYer, doesn't it? If you think about it, a person who is able to do domestic repairs is a DIYer. So that's why I've kind of tied DIY with the handyman. So let's see, so let's see what's in a name. Um, to give you an idea, I use a couple of different names. I use my Ultimate DIYer for my channel because I want to be able to teach homeowners and uh, average everyday Joes how to do some of the things I do as well. Because I think most people should be able to do a lot of these things and they need to save money. So it broadens my audience a little bit. But I like the Ultimate DIYer name. I have what's called Rogan LLC, which is my umbrella name for all of my businesses. And so everything goes under that. It's an LLC, which means it goes under my social security. The name that I use for my handyman business, though, is uh, King's Castle Repair. My last name is King, so I tie my name in with it. Castle, it's your castle, and I'm there to repair it. I tend to use that. I'll use that in all my documentation, but on my truck, I generally just put handyman with the phone number. The reason I do that is I don't want this really long title that somebody has to try to remember going down the road. I want them to look and say, oh, it's a handyman. They say, oh, handyman, write his name, you know, write his number down. We'll give him a call. And they'll call me or text me and say, hey, I saw your truck. It says you do handyman stuff. That's all I need them to do from that particular advertisement. So I use the names in different areas at different times. So that being said, how would you pick your name? So I would say you want to keep your name descriptive, but yet short. So go back to King's Castle Repair. If I have to put that on the side of my truck all the time, that's a lot of letters. So the shorter my letters are and the more catchy, it's easier for somebody to remember. It's also cheaper when it comes to advertising. So you can use multiple names like I do for different scenarios, or you can use one particular name. If you happen to be, you know, very lucky and your name is Danny and you call yourself Handy Dandy or Handy Danny Home Repairs or Handyman, it's pretty short. And it's very catchy. So you want it short, but yet you want it descriptive. In mine, I use Kings because that's who I am. And of course, it's repair and castle is like your castle, whether that's a commercial building or a home. And then the other thing is uh, you want to get onto Google and do a Google search for names. Now, there's a lot of sites that will give you ideas, which you can kind of feed off of, which is great. But do not pick or use any of those names unless you have done a thorough check and make sure that somebody in your area is not using that name. They can go down and actually copyright that name, and you can do the same thing. Even if you are a sole proprietor, you can go down for, in Dallas, I believe it's 25 to 35 bucks. I'm not sure what it is right now, but it's right around that area. And you can register your name. So if I was not an LLC, say on King's Castle Repair, I could go and I could 
uh, register that name so it would be Ron King doing business as King's Castle Repair. And that saves that protects that name. I believe it's five years at a time. Every five years, you have to go back down and renew it. If you copyright that name, it's a whole different ball game. It's going to cost you a little more money. You usually have to get a lawyer. You can do it on your own, but I would recommend the lawyer. And then you, when you copyright it, you tend, that tends to make it nationwide, which uh, can be a very big benefit if you ever decide you're going to spread out and multiply and have uh, uh, other shops in other cities and things like that. So depending on how big you, you should always shoot for the stars and go ahead and try to lock things down so it's yours forever. You also want to do not just a, a Google search for the name to see if it's available, but do a .com search uh, like GoDaddy. Uh, they'll you can get a, a .com name through them, and you do a search first to make sure that name is not taken anywhere. Uh, there are also other platforms besides .com now. There's a bunch of different ones, but .com is still the one you want to try to shoot for if you can get it. Uh, I would also do a YouTube search for that name and make sure that somebody doesn't already have that on YouTube because you may decide you want to have a YouTube channel yourself someday. Even if you don't plan on doing like what I'm doing, but you want to advertise your business through YouTube, think about what is, what's a better advertising tool than to be able to show your customer some of the work you've done and happy customers so that they know who you are before you ever walk through the door. So. Those are just some of the little basic things. If you know more things, be sure and make some, leave some comments and let people know. Uh, let me know. Love reading the comments, and I'll, there's always going to be things I'm going to overlook. So if you spot them, be sure and let me know. Now, I'm going to give you some names of some of the uh, – these are some of the names I thought that were pretty catchy. Of course, Handy Dandy is a, is a great one. Uh, there's one that's uh, the wife's list or to-do list that they turned it into a handyman, which is really good. But I like uh, rent a handyman is great. Uh, the handyman is good. Hire a handyman. Mr. Fix-It, excellent. If you could find a way to work Fix-It in into yours, that's great. You know, if your last name was King, Mr. Fix-It King, or King of the, King of the Fix-It, something like that would be great. The home doctor. Anytime you can use the word doctor, it's very catchy. Uh, let's see. I, another one I liked was handy time. Now, handy time, handyman service. Now, I'm going to go through some of the other names that if you do a search and you do a, you know, what are other names for a handyman? These are going to be a lot of the things that are considered a handyman. Uh, doctor was number one. Handy person, which I like because if you could be male or female, the tinkerer, the repairer, the renovator, which is a very good one, uh, repair man or repair woman, jack of all trades. That's a good one. The only problem I have with saying jack of all trades is generally people will have it in their head. If he's a jack of all trades, he's a master of none. And that's why I don't I don't particularly like to use jack of all trades in my titles or in my descriptions of anything, because they're, you're being a jack means that you're okay at a whole bunch of things, but you master none of them, which in my case is not necessarily true. I've mastered several things, but there are other things that I'm more of a jack in, and you don't I don't think you would particularly really want that in your title, but who knows. The other would be a serviceman, a mender, not a mentor, but a mendor, like a min mendering something, I guess, mendor, a little tongue tied. Uh, do it yourselfer, which is DIY. It all ties back in again. Uh, troubleshooter and mechanic, which was kind of an interesting one for me because when I hear the word mechanic, I guess I think of an auto mechanic. Now, I used to work for Texas Instruments, and I was what they called a PM mechanic, where I went around and I maintained all of their big giant air handlers and uh, their lighting system through their gigantic wings that they have. I mean, it's a huge place. Each wing in Texas Instruments is the size of a Walmart store. I mean, they're just huge. But they were called mechanics, PM mechanics. So I, I guess I can see that. But those are some of the interesting uh 
things that you may be able to tie into your name. So let's go over just one real time, uh, time one one more time real quickly. So we want to make it descriptive and we want to make it as short as possible. If you can tie your name into it, that's fantastic, but don't think you have to because you can do that in possibly your, like in my case, Rogan Enterprises LLC, which is my umbrella name. Um, also, you may want a YouTube name a little different than your business name unless you're doing your YouTube channel strictly for your business and to promote just your handyman business. Um, so be sure you do your searches, your Google search, YouTube search, and a dot .com search. Those are the big ones. And there's a few others you can do as well. Be sure you do a search just for popular handyman names. And a lot of them will give you like 300 names. And you can kind of use bits and pieces and tie them together. So in a, in a nutshell, that's all you really need to do for a name. But spend some time on it. It's important. You're going to have that name for a long time. And it's going to be tied to you. So you want it to be good. You want it to be catchy. You don't want to just grab the first name that comes to mind. You may want to make a list of, you know, 10, 15, 20 names and then go around and hand that list or a copy of that list to everybody in your family and let them check off what they think. Some of your best friends, let them check off the one they like. Now, don't hand them the exact same list because they may just see what everybody else is picking and say, oh, yeah, that is good. And they may pick it. Hand them their own separate list. Let them go through it and pick what they think is good and then tally it up see what they think you could even put it out on facebook to your friends on facebook i'm opening up my own handyman business and these are the names what do you guys think and see what kind of response you get because after all you're going to be throwing it out there to the public you want people to not only notice the name but you want them to remember the name and when you get your your number, I mean, I even changed my cell phone number to make my number easier to repeat and remember. All these little details go a long way. And so, you know, I hope you got something out of this. If you haven't subscribed, be sure you subscribe. If you haven't hit the bell notification, be sure you hit that little bell notification so you'll know about the, the next upcoming videos as they're being released. Be sure and leave me comments. Comments help the channel grow. If you'd like to see this channel grow and like to see it get bigger, in which, by the way, it is getting bigger and it's growing daily, and I appreciate that, but I need the comments because that is how YouTube rates channels. They like to see comments. They like to see people uh, taking part in discussions and things. So let me know what you want to see. Let me know what I've said wrong. Let me know what I've said right. Let me know if there's things that you would add. Uh, let me know what kind of videos you would like to see. Uh, if there's a certain playlist that you would like me to add where I just make a string of those videos for a while. But uh, I do appreciate you guys watching, and we will catch you on the next one.